So Sue Hubbard is a poet, novelist, and art critic. She's published three collections of poetry, three novels, a collection of short stories, and a book on art. Hubbard's last novel, Rain Songs, was published in 2018. Sue will be reading from her forthcoming poetry collection, Swimming to Albania, published by Salmon Press, Salmon Press Island um, this summer. Welcome, Sue. Thank you, Lucy, very much for asking me to do this as I was a bit of a latecomer, but um, so nice to be back doing Authors Club things. Um, swimming to Albania is obviously a metaphor, and in a sense it's a metaphor just as the Skellix was a metaphor um, in rain songs, as a place that you can't quite get to. This poem, this, this collection is in three parts, and my poems are all very lyrical, they're quite personal. They go from childhood through the death of my father, through um, exploring European cities um, in Portugal and uh, Italy and um, swimming to Albania in the end. But obviously I can't read all of those, but um, I'm going to touch on some of the ones on childhood and touch on the ones to my father as well. And um, we'll see how we go for time. Um, okay. Um, this is the first poem in the collection. It's called Lost in Space. There are galaxies inside me, interstellar stars and dust. I am full of dark matter, quarks and spirals of deep love that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Lives that might have been different under other alignments. Somewhere amid black holes and the absorption of light, beyond the mass of Milky Way. There's a distant room, the walls covered with faded flowers, a meadow of flecked sunlight where a child lies beneath a bleached quilt in a narrow bed, dreaming of a boat with a single blue sail, a boat that will take her home. The second poem is called 1955, perhaps, question mark, and came from looking at some photographs. Late winter afternoon, a London park, the distant trees ghostly on the far bank of the bleak lake. Four and seven, say, in camel coats with beaver collars feeding the ducks. I'm holding a bag of bread, standing beside my sister as we stare ahead in the line of duty with nothing between us except a strip of grey water and a single moorhen sailing blithely by. Above... Rain clouds gather as the last few birds dart for shelter before the skies splits open. This is very much of a certain age um, and a certain era, a fast dance and it's called snow. Lost in an infinity of misted mirrors among shelves of Optrex, Pepsodent and pink calamine, I dunked net petticoats into sugar solution to froth out the nylon frills of that first dance dress. Hanging it to drip dry over the porcelain sink, I squeezed obdurate adolescent flesh into a rub rubber roll-on that chafed my thighs, attached 15 deniers to silk suspenders before turning to straighten the wayward seam along a newly shaved leg and wriggling into my strapless wonder bra. 
none spitting into the little baker-like box to soften the black wax, a flick of mascara applied with a tiny brush. Back combing my hair, the lady on the elnet tin of hairspray smiled with a poise I knew I could never muster. So much preparation to end alone beneath the rotating mirror ball as the last walls faded and flakes of light spangled my bare arms in falling snow. Childhood in this collection moves backwards and forwards with poems to my parents. And this poem was written like a couple of days after my father died and it's um, called Hats. The tall boy is empty now, except for your hats. Three battered Panamas strimmed with striped Petersham bands squatting in the mahogany dark. One, a jaunty fedora, the sort worn by a, a, a Cuban paterfamilias with hairy arms, sporting a large Havana cigar. The other, more elegant, with a wide brim and a mafioso air that would be at home on a terrace above the sparkling Bay of Naples with a plate of frutti di mare and a carafe of local wine or on the bald paint of an oncologist watching his young mistress slowly turning in the sun. The third, the most battered, with a hole in the crown, is the one you wore to deadhead the roses in your rust-coloured chinos and old cashmere before settling with that glass of g and as the sun went down. Now, as the afternoon fades into evening, the deep wardrobe radiates its own particular light and there's silence everywhere. Um, my last book, uh, Rain Songs, was published in Ireland and I go to Ireland to write um, a lot. And, um, these next two poems were written at the Tyrone Guthrie Centre. Rain Songs was written on the West Coast. Um, the Tyrone Guthrie Centre, for all you writers who might like to go there, is wonderful. Um, and there's a big lake there. So these two are about the lake. Flying ducks. I keep attempting to reach the lake but all the paths double back before they get to the edge or disappear in clumps of clegg infested bracken. I try again down another track, fringed pink with rose bay willow, turning fast to end of summer beards, but unthwarted by a scribble of briars. I can see it through the trees. The verticals of tall, dark pine cross-hatching the sliver of burnished steel. I don't know whether to keep trying or turn back, except I've glimpsed that arc of deep water where ducks take off in step formations like porcelain fowl flying across a suburban wall. This is the same lake. And even with all the forgiving, the being in this moment and this, following every tilt and shift of the world, the stillness of snow, the seeping of gray dawn over the grimy sill, the curdy light of the city and its stale breathing, it's then I think of that dark lake, the trees leaning out over its black mirrored skin fringed with purple loose strife that grows along the edge of slow moving water 
the bulrushes reflected in its anthracite depths and imagining diving down and down into that icy water through duckweed and pools of green algae, water meal and water hyacinths, milfoy and hydrilla to be caught in tendrils of curly leaf pond weed. Then on, deeper still, past clasping leaf pond weed with its thin and delicate oval shaped leaves that are wide and wavy, coon tail that lacks any true roots, and the naiad and sago pond weed to where light ceases. Downwards, with its cold seal body towards that lost thing, that special thing I know is there in the muddy depths till I can no longer go on holding my breath. And um, the two last poems are... Um, we might have to just do one if that's all right. We're okay, just a bit fine. short, I'm sorry. It's very short, okay. Um, that's fine. Um, well, I'll read the, the last one in, in the collection then, which is the last one I wrote, actually. And it's called um, Those Far Blue Hills. I have become a connoisseur of roads, having grown weary of anticipation, of waiting too long in the dark hours for whispered promises and midnight calls. Now I take this solitary journey down hidden byways and lanes, hauling this horse hair body towards those far blue hills and stagnant dikes, the shifting sands and impatient cities. Longing for wilderness, I've become a storyteller of absence and loss. Though all travel is a form of return as well as departure, between barren islands and bare rocks, I trek this narrow path without losing sight of the stony shore where a white har draws in across the purple sky and this journey ceases. Thank you, really terrific, Sue. There's loads of comments. I'll just say, um, I just felt it was really very moving, really raw. Um, you talk about the storyteller of absence and loss, and that's you. Things that I love, the curdy light, the, the strapless wonder bras, certain of us will remember those, um, mm -hmm. and just brilliantly done. And uh, lots of comments. Those blue remember tales from Jeff, so moving, Susie Fay. I get the most wonderful pictures in my head, Sue. That's from Kate Birch. Um, very evocative, Rod uh, Donahue and Carolyn Beckenham agrees. Um, anyone else want to add any comments um, verbally by unmuting themselves? Rod seems to have unmuted himself. I, th I thought it was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a really, really well received and powerful collection. I think you're going to go great guns with it, Sue. It's so exciting for us to get this to get this preview because what a powerful collection um, and I, I can so see the emotion in your voice it's it's been so um postponed because of covid it should have come out in the autumn so hopefully it'll be this spring but um thank you so much i've actually written another one since then so. <laughs> Well, no bad thing. It's been it's been delayed. We'd we'd want to we'd want to see you in person reading it. We really would. But it's been terrific tonight, and thank you for giving us thank you so much for the the comments. That's well, very encouraging. Thank you for that preview. I'm going to stop our recording.